So the next thing that we're going to do is image formation by concave lens. We first did convex lens. Now we're going to do in case of a concave lens. Okay. So here there are only two cases when the image is coming from the rays are coming from infinity. That is the object is at infinity. So the rays are coming parallel to the principal axis. So like we did in the case of the cases that we were doing that we did in case of a concave mirror when the rays are coming parallel to the principal axis they obviously diverge because a concave lens is a diverging lens so what happens they don't actually meet the rays don't actually meet in real life anywhere so what do we do we make them meet virtually by retracing the rays okay and we know then when the rays are coming parallel to the principal axis they meet at the focus so here they appear to diverge from the focus like we said in case of a convex mirror okay so here we have the mirror, the lens this is the optical center f1 to f1 f2 and 2 f2 so here the rays come like this you can see the rays are coming parallel to the principal axis so like this what happens it gets it's basically, it is a diverging lens, so the ray goes away. And then here also, if a ray is coming like this, it goes something like this. Okay, the lens is a little small, but you can make it like this. And now, what happens? We retrace these rays, and when you retrace these rays, they come back to the focus. So now, when you are making diagrams like these, if you are not given exact measurements, what you should do is, you should keep your scale here, like here, follow my cursor, I am on the picture that is given here. You should keep your scale like this. Basically, you draw a ray parallel to the principal axis. Then at this point, the point where this ray meets the optical axis, the straight axis, you keep your scale like this so that it meets the ray at this point and the optical axis and the scale also passes through the focus. So, you know that the ray is supposed to actually, when you retrace it, go through the focus. So that just after diversion, you don't draw the ray like this or this because then if you retrace it, it is going to go somewhere here, which is not the focus. So, when you are drawing ray diagrams, this is something that you have to keep in your mind that, okay, I know that the ray has to like be retraced to come back to the focus so I will draw the diverging ray in such a way that when it is retraced it passes through the focus so you have to draw your line like this you will keep your scale like this meeting the ray at the point on the optical axis as well on the focus okay now the second case is when the object is kept between 2f1 and f1 that is between the focus and 2f1 so here, because I said there are only two cases, like you remember in case of a convex mirror we are done, there were only two cases when the object was at infinity and when the object was anywhere between the pole and infinity. So somewhere on the, the principal axis but between the pole and infinity. So similarly in case of a concave lens, because you remember we had said that a convex lens does the opposite with of what a convex mirror does. Like a convex mirror, is it a diverging mirror or a converging mirror? It is a diverging mirror. But a convex lens, it is actually a converging lens, right? So it's basically opposite for the mirror and lens, what the convex does. Okay, so here also, this is not just for like between 2F1 and F1. This object could be here. This object could be here. This object could be anywhere. So here in your picture, in your PPT, it is shown... So here in your PPT, it is shown between 2F1 and F1. Even if I don't take it like that, say I want it beyond 2F1, I can do that also. If I want it beyond 2F1, then this is my lens, my concave lens. This is my principal axis. This is the optical axis. This is the optical center. This is my F1, this is my 2F1, this is my F2 and 2F2. So, if an object is kept here, say, so what happens? One ray passes parallel 
and then what happens it basically diverges in a way that it passes through the focus so i'm going to keep my scale like this so that my scale lies on this point this point where the ray meets the optical axis and at the focus so i'm going to draw this line dotted because i know that this is not an actual line we are just retracing it and this line i draw straight because this is how my ray actually goes after refraction from a concave lens the second ray i want to draw through the optical center that is the easiest because through the optical center it doesn't go through any deviation or refraction so that is the probably the easiest one so this goes through the so this goes through the optical center so now where do these two rays meet this actually dotted ray and this ray that we have drawn through the optical center where do they meet they meet somewhere here right so this is my this is if this is my ab this is my a dash b dash so what can i say about this image is the image virtual and erect or is it real and inverted now if you are not able to tell if it's real or virtual then you can use the concept that i told you that if it's real then it has to be inverted it will be upside down and if it's virtual it has to be erect that means upright so in this case is my image upright or is my image inverted like hanging off the ceiling in this case it is upright right so if it's upright then is it virtual or is it real it's always virtual and erect real and inverted but here it is erect so it is virtual and erect so the image formed is virtual and erect and where is the image formed the image formed is between focus and the optical center so here also in the example that is given to you in your ppt even though the object is placed at a different place it is between 2f1 and f1 where is the image formed it is formed between f and o that means it is formed between the focus and optical center and again image size is it diminished or is it enlarged it is diminished right and in this case in both the cases it is virtual and erect so the one case in con case of concave lens is object at infinity and the Im image is formed at the focus second case is when object is anywhere between infinity and the optical center then where is the image formed it is always formed no matter where you keep the object you keep it beyond 2f1 you keep it between f and 2f1 you keep it anywhere it is formed if just not at infinity anywhere except infinity then the image is formed where between the focus and the optical center i have showed you two examples you can draw in as n number of ray diagrams as you want you will always get the object here between the f and o okay let's move on now like we did sign convention for the mirrors we are going to do sign convention for the lenses so most of the things are same let us just read through we would understand everything because we have already done sign convention for mirrors okay so it reads for lenses i am reading in your ppt okay for lenses we follow sign convention similar to the ones used in spherical mirrors as i just told you we apply the rules for signs of distances except that all measurements are taken from the optical center so here what does it mean except it means it is actually comparing it to mirror so in the mirror where were all measurements taken from do you remember like in case of mirror if you remember who remembers can someone tell me it is taken from the pole all dis distances are measured from the pole all horizontal distances all vertical distances are obviously measured from the principal axis that remains the same because the principal axis is the principal axis in the case of spherical mirrors also or in the case of spherical lens also next it reads according to sign convention the focal length of a convex lens now this is important this is very important and this is what you are going to use in your numericals also focal length of a convex lens is positive and that of a concave lens is negative so this is something that you have to remember f positive for what convex and f is negative for what concave now in case of the convex mirror and concave mirror you could easily imagine it right because the convex mirror was like bulging out so the focal length was right lying towards the right hand side right so that was positive and in case of a concave mirror 
the sphere was like this so the focus and the radius of curvature were all lying to the left hand side of the pole or left hand side of the zero as we said so they were taken as negative but here because there are two surfaces so you would be confused thinking okay which surface do we consider to remember the focal length so to avoid all of that convention just remember that the focal length is same in case of the convex and concave lens and mirror so in case of a convex mirror you remember if this is our convex mirror our focal length used to be here and our center of curvature used to be here so because it is to the right side of the pole like to the right side of the zero it is taken as positive and in case of a concave mirror the focus and center of curvature were all to the left side of the pole so they were taken as negative so you can remember this as the only thing that is common between the concave lens and mirror and convex lens and mirror because their actual like their actual behavior towards light is absolutely the opposite right concave lens what does it do converging lens diverging lens a concave lens it is a diverging lens but a concave mirror it is a converging mirror right so absolutely opposite convex lens what is it converging diverging it is converging but convex mirror it was a diverging mirror right so in case of the behavior towards light the lens and mirror of convex are opposite and lens and mirror of concave are opposite but what is the one thing that is same you can remember it like this the only thing that is same is the sign of the focal length okay in case of convex lens the focal length is positive and in case of a concave lens the focal length is negative okay now the next thing it says here is you must take care to apply appropriate signs for the values of u f everything that remains the same like we did in case of the mirrors that to the right side in case of a lens it's not pole but it's an optical center so to the right side of the optical center so here the optical center is the zero of the number line so to the right side of the optical center all distance is positive to the left side of the optical center all distances are negative okay and similarly upwards from the principal axis like the positive y axis upwards is positive and downwards is negative so if you're having trouble remembering it like oh y axis i don't know where so because the x axis this horizontal line is very easy for you to remember because you have done the number line in class 6th and class 7th right so to the right side of 0 and to the left side of 0 should not be a confusion for you but if the vertical axis like the distances or the height of the object and image that we have to measure we have to measure like this right it's not like this it is actually like this so if you're having trouble remembering the way i'm saying like the positive x axis or positive or negative y. but in case of the height of the image and height of the object they are measured like this na so if you're having trouble imagining oh positive y axis and positive negative y axis ma'am is like confusing me so how you can remember it is upwards you're going up that means you are good you are growing so it is positive it's a positive thing in life but if you are going downwards that means you are becoming a bad person or it is a bad thing it's always said that you should always grow right you should never go down in life so if you are going down from the principal axis it's a bad thing so it's a negative thing so you can remember it like that also so upwards is a good sign positive and downwards is a bad sign so negative so you can remember like that for the image and object height and obviously the distance from the optical center left and right you know just like a number line so right of the optical center or zero of number line positive left of the optical center or zero of number line is negative great moving on now we're going to look at the lens formula and magnification so in case of the mirrors we did the lens formula and magnification similarly we're going to do it in case of the lens also so here you remember the formula there used to be 1 upon v plus 1 upon u is equal to 1 upon f right so here the only difference is that in case of this positive sign there is a negative sign for lens so the formula is this 1 upon v minus 1 upon u equal to 1 upon f and the rules remain the same that when you put in the value of v and put in the value of u whatever is given to you you always think of the sign convention like okay where is this place is it placed to the left of the optical axis so it's a plus sign. sorry you always think of 
where is this placed okay if it's placed to the left side of the optical center then it is a negative sign to the right side of the optical center it's a positive sign okay similarly the magnification like we said remember in case of mirror so many things can be determined in case of magnification we can determine if the image formed is enlarged diminished or the same size we can look at the sign and we can tell if it's erect if it's a plus sign it's erect if it's a negative sign that means it's downward so it's inverted right and we can also tell the nature of the image because if it's a plus sign that means it is erect and what virtual and erect and if it's a negative sign then it's what inverted and real and inverted right great so in case of a lens formula here we have magnification as same h dash upon h that is the height of the image divided by the height of the object and again the same in as in case of a mirror just with the difference of a sign so you remember in case of a mirror it was minus v by u equal to h dash upon h but here it is a plus v by u and again one thing that i told you at that time also this plus is the formula plus this is not actually showing the sign of v or u this plus that you put here or the minus in case of a mirror is the formula ka sign okay when you put in the values of v or u you will have to always think is it to the left side of the optical center or right side of the optical center okay and then put the sign accordingly okay so here we are given an example that says a concave lens has focal length of 15 cm so again you are going to highlight all of the things that are important and you are going to write just one sign of what it is so what is given to us this is f okay sign by sign i don't mean plus or minus by sign i mean the symbol for it then it is asking at what distance should the object from the lens be placed so that it forms an image we are given the image that means is this u or is this v you need to remember this from when we did the mirrors this is the same notif notification that we use it's the same conventional sign u is used for object and v is used for image so what is given to us the image position is given to us so that means this is v and also find the magnification produced by lens great so first of all like i told you in every answer to make it methodical we write whatever is given to us so what is given to us first it is given that it's a concave lens so always write the type of lens here okay a concave lens is given to us now what are the things that are given to us that the focal length you will write it completely you will write focal length and then bracket f i am not writing it here but you have to write it always in your notebooks okay now the focal length we'll put the sign in a bit is 15 cm now tell me the concave lens focal length is it negative or is it positive i just told you that the only thing similar between the lens and the mirror is that the sign of the focal length is same so just think back in case of a mirror it's easy for you to determine the sign of the focal length so the concave mirror was like this so where was the sphere the sphere was this side or was it this side it was this side so the focal length lies somewhere here so that means to the left of the pole so positive or negative negative and it is the same i said in case of a lens also so it's a minus 15 cm that is our concave lens focal length what is what else is given to us we are given image distance you will write the whole thing v is given to us now for this to be determined for the sign of this to be determined we'll just write 10 cm because we know that now you'll have to go back to the ray diagram that we studied you remember in concave lens there were only two cases and think back in both of the cases do you remember where the image was formed was in any case the image formed to the right side of the lens no right in both the cases the image was formed to the left side of the lens and in both the case the images were virtual and erect because we had retraced one of the rays so if even one of the rays is retraced that means in real life is it being formed it's not right so it automatically becomes virtual so all of these things you should have in your mind so that when you solve the question and you get an answer giving you a negative magnification that means inverted image that means inverted image is real image 
so you will automatically know okay i have made some mistake in my calculation because the image cannot come inverted in case of a concave lens so this is why the image and the ray diagrams are so important because you can consequently keep checking your answers and see ki okay did i do the right thing did i get the logically correct answer that i should have from my mathematical calculation so you can constantly keep checking like this okay so we know in case of a concave lens image is formed to the left side so it's a negative sign again next left side of the optical center so here what do we have to find we'll also write down what is to find here we have to find the look at the question at what distance should the object be placed from the lens that means we have to find the u and what is the next thing that we have to find we also have to find the magnification produced by the lens so m also we have to find great now let's start the solution so we are going to start you you should get used to writing complete sentences in your word problem so you should write using the mirror sorry using the lens formula given to us i am just writing it in short but you have to write it in complete detail okay using the mirror formula we know that 1 upon v minus 1 upon u is equal to 1 upon f right so from here if we we need to know u so we just keep u to this side let let's send everything else to the other side so minus 1 upon u is here 1 upon f minus 1 upon v right so if we take the negative sign here this 1 by f becomes negative and this 1 by v becomes positive so we get this negative sign is gone so 1 by u is equal to 1 by v minus 1 by f now if we put i'm just going to draw a line here now if we put the values that we know we want to find 1 by u we know that what is v v is nothing but minus 10 minus what is f it is minus 15 please 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 always remember to use sign convention in this case or your answer will always come wrong okay now this minus 15 and this minus here they cancel out and they become plus so this actually becomes plus 15 minus 1 by 10 so plus 1 by 15 minus 1 by 10 right now if we take the lcm of 15 and 10 what is the lcm of 15 and 10 calculate it it comes out to be 30 okay so 15 into 2 is 30 and 10 into 3 is 30 so we get u 1 by u as minus 1 by 30 so therefore we take the reciprocal of this and we get u is equal to minus 30 cm so here if u is minus 30 cm now you will write a statement here so you would write the object length your object distance was found to be 30 cm and the negative and the negative sign shows what that it is placed to the left side of the optical center using the sign convention so we say that the object is placed to the left side of the optical center at 30 cm from the optical center okay now the next thing that we have to find we have to find the magnification so what did we learn that magnification formula is h dash upon h or it is equal to v by u so here there is no negative sign so positive sign so you don't need to write it so do we have to use this bit do we have to use h dash upon h are we given the image height or the object height we are not but as i said before always have a habit of writing the whole formula so that you don't forget one part of it think of in, in sub questions you get the height of the image and object but you've always been writing just m equal to v by u you will not remember that there is an h dash and uh, h dash upon h also in this formula so make it a habit to write the whole formula and just use the part of the formula that is required okay so m is equal to v by u so what is our v here v is minus 10 that is given to us in the question what is u u we have calculated with the sign always put the sign so this minus and minus cancel out this 0 and 0 cancel out so this becomes 1 by 3 or this becomes 0.33 this is the magnification produced so this number 0.33 is it greater than 1 less than 1 or equal to 1 it is less than 1 so do you remember what we had studied what does the number in the magnification mean 
it means it shows the size of the image so if it's less than 1 that means the image is smaller than the object now you can simultaneously keep checking what you had done in ray diagrams with your question in case of concave lens what did we do the image was always formed diminished when the object is at infinity image is at focused point size object anywhere between infinity and optical center image is diminished so part 1 completely verified so the object is diminished you can write it here that image formed is diminished second part even if the question doesn't ask you to tell these things just tell these things it it shows that you know your concepts okay now second thing is this magnification positive or is it negative it is a positive number so what does that mean what did magnification tell us that if it's positive which direction is positive upwards or downwards upwards going up in life is always positive so the image is formed like this that means erect so if it's erect what goes with erect what is the pair virtual and erect so then again you can connect it to the ray diagram that we had done when it is in case of a concave lens the object is always virtual and erect so again you can write that the image is virtual and erect diminished virtual and erect okay so that is it with this question next question it says that a 2 cm tall object so again tall object it's given object and this is 2 cm tall which means this is the height of the object which means it is small h is placed perpendicular to the principal axis always our object is placed perpendicular if this is the principal axis the object is always like this right object is never like this it's not like the eiffel tower right so always place perpendicular to the principal axis of a convex lens great of focal length 10 cm great so this is f given to us the distance of the object from the lens is 15 cm this is what object distance u find the nature position and size of the image nature means what is it real inverted or is it virtual erect position means at what distance from the optical center and on which side of the lens and size means is it diminished or is it high and large or is it the same size and we have to use the magnification formula to actually calculate the size of the image also find its magnification great now again we in the answer we write whatever is given to us what is given to us here that it is a convex lens great next what is the thing given to us the first thing that is given to us is you write object height you write the whole thing h is equal to 20 cm sign tell me the sign object is it ever, ever kept like hanging from the ceiling no object is always like this going in the upward direction so is upward positive is upward going upward or growth in life a positive thing yes so it's a plus 20 cm okay perpendicular to the principal axis focal length next thing is given focal length you write the whole thing f is equal to something 10 cm so in case of a convex mirror where is the sphere the sphere is like this so the radius focus all of these are towards the right side of the pole so focal length is positive and i said it is the same for lens also so it is a positive focal length plus 20 cm great next thing that is given to us distance of the object great object distance is given to us as 15 cm now negative or positive is the object always kept to the left of the lens or right of the lens always to the left side of the lens so it is always negative awesome next we have to find find what all we have to find nature position size and magnification great you write it completely okay we have to find the nature size position and magnification awesome the solution so the first thing we need to find the distance of the object or distance of the image so we use the formula 1 upon v minus 1 upon u is equal to 1 upon f great so 1 upon v we have to find we keep 1 upon v here we take 1 upon u to the other side so this minus becomes plus so 1 upon f Plus one upon u is equal to one upon v. Then we put the values of f and u that we know. What is the value of f? It is plus ten centimeter 
plus what is the value of u we know it is minus 15 centimeter we just did it in the last question what is the lcm of 10 and 15 it is 30 so 10 into 3 minus this minus goes up 15 into 2 so our 1 upon v becomes 1 upon v is equal to 1 by 30. So therefore reciprocal v is equal to 30 centimeter. So v is a positive 30 centimeter. Now if you think back, if you want to check this, just think about when we had done the ray diagram. You remember when we did the ray diagram, where is this object placed? We know that the focal length is 10 centimeter. This is the f1. This is given to us at 10 centimeter. And we are given object is at from at 15 centimeter from lens. So if f is here, at what distance is 2f1? We know that if this is the focal length, then the distance between f1 and 2f1 is same. So this is also 10 centimeter. So what is this total distance? It is 10 plus 10, 20 centimeter. So if the object is placed at 15 centimeter from the optical center, where is it kept? So from the optical center, 10 centimeters we reach the focus and 5 centimeter we reach somewhere here. Somewhere between F1 and 2F1. So do you remember where our image was formed in case of this? If you don't, if you do well and good that means you have revised your previous topics well which is extremely important. But if you don't I will remind it to you. I am not drawing the whole ray diagram. I am just telling you when we had done the ray diagrams we had seen that the image is formed beyond 2f2 and it is like this. It is first thing it is inverted and real. Second thing it is enlarged. These are the things that we know already from the ray diagram. So as and when we get the answers we can instantly cross check and see if our answers are correct. So the first thing we got here was v equal to 30 centimeter and v is a plus 30. What does plus mean? That the image is formed to the right side of the optical center. Look at our diagram. Is the image to the right side of the optical center? Yes. So it is cross-checked. Our V is correct. Next thing we want to find out. We want to find the, we found the position now nature and size and magnification. So all of this we'll get from the magnification formula. So M is equal to H dash upon H is equal to V by U. Right? So here we want to find the magnification. We have found V, we have found U. Right? So first we find the magnification. What is the magnification here? It is V by U. What is V? Plus 30. What is U? Minus 15. So it cancels out to 2 and there is a minus sign. So our magnification comes out to be minus 2. Now let's analyze this. First we look at this number. So when I say that the number has to be greater than 1 or less than 1, I only look at the number without the sign. Because I've told you the sign only tells us if it is a positive or virtual and erect. Positive means the image is formed in upward direction and positive. So if it's a downward direction, that means negative. So this sign given here, this sign you don't have to consider when you are comparing and seeing if this number is less than 1 or greater than 1. This sign only tells you if the image is real and inverted or virtual and erect. When is it real and inverted? How does the real and inverted image look? It goes downward. It goes downward. So is downward the way to go in life? No, that's a negative thing. So if the magnification is negative, it says that the image is real and inverted. Right? We said that upwards positive, downwards negative. That's how we remember it. Now, if the magnification was positive, that means the image is going upward, which is a good thing. So, positive. And which image is upwards, real and erect or virtual and inverted? Sorry. And which image, which image is in the upward direction, real and inverted or virtual and erect? It is virtual and erect. So, what does this negative sign tell us? You are going to write this in words, okay? I am just using arrows and telling it to you. But you will write proper sentences. You will say that this negative sign tells us that the image is found formed in the downward direction. That means the image is real and inverted. Okay? 
So you can again cross check this from the ray diagram. Look at the ray diagram. Is the image inverted? Yes, that means the result you have got is correct. Now you look at this number. Now you look at this 2. So I hope you've understood what I was trying to tell you. If you look at the whole number minus 2, is minus 2 less than 1 or is it greater than 1? It is less than 1. But we can see that the image here is magnified. It is much bigger. So our M should come out to be greater than 1. So that is why we don't consider this sign. This sign is only considered when we have to determine if it's real and inverted or virtual and erect. When we have to see if it is enlarged or diminished or the same size, we look at this number that is given independent of its sign. So if you just look at this number, this number is 2. Less than 1, greater than 1 or equal to 1? It is greater than 1. And what did it mean when magnification was greater than 1? That means image is enlarged. Again, cross check it from your ray diagram. Is the image arrow enlarged? Is it bigger than the object arrow? Yes. So, again the answer you have gotten is correct. The inverted was also correct. Great. So, you have gotten three things by now. You have determined the position of the image, the nature which is real and inverted and how enlarged or diminished it is. Now, you have to find the actual size of the image. So, we know the first part of the formula is m is equal to h dash upon h. Right. And here we got our m as minus 2. We just got it here. So we put minus 2 in this equation. So we get minus 2 is equal to h dash. Do we know the image height? No, we have to find it. So h dash upon, do we know the object height? Yes, the first part of the question that is given to us is the object height. I have written it, sorry, I have written it wrong. It's given 2 centimeter. I have written 20 centimeter, sorry. It's 2 centimeter. So we write 2 centimeter here. So so h dash is equal to minus 2 into 2 is equal to minus 4 centimeters. Okay. Now again, why is this minus sign coming? This minus sign is only showing us that the image is in the downward direction and this number is the actual size of the image or height of the image. So next line you will write. The final conclusion is that the height of the image is 4 cm. So you can see also what was the height of the object given? 2 cm. What is the height of the image? 4 cm. How many times 2 is 4? 2 into 2 is 4, right? So the image is 2 times magnified than the object. And what is the magnification? It's minus 2. That is 2 times the object is magnified. So you have kind of confirmed your answer here. So the object object height is 2. The magnification you found was minus 2. Minus only shows that it is real and inverted. That 2 shows that it is 2 times magnified. So if you multiply the object height 2 with 2 you get 4. So you have also confirmed your answer like this. Great. Now we have found all answers to this. Now, the last thing we have to study is the power of the lens. So, the power of is nothing but the degree of convergence or divergence of light. That means, how much can a lens converge or diverge light? Like, if this is a convex lens, right? And this is another convex lens. So, if the rays is coming from here parallel to the, con parallel to the principal axis, and they are con the convex lens is making them converge somewhere here. But this convex lens for rays coming from infinity, they, it makes it converge somewhere here, much, much before this lens. That means that the converging power of the lens is very high. That means that the power of the lens is high. So that is what we mean by the degree of convergence or divergence. Degree means by how much or by how much strength can it converge? If it's a very high powered convex lens, then it would converge the lights very fast. If it is a very high power concave lens, it would diverge the light very highly. Okay, like I've shown you through the example. So this lens has lesser power compared to this lens. Okay, the power of the lens is defined as the reciprocal of its focal length. And the thing we have to keep in mind is, that in this case, focal length has always has to be in meters. Okay. The SI unit of the power of lens is diopter. It is denoted by capital letter D. And here it is said, 
you know students this is something that you will learn even more in the next other chapters that you do that whenever you have to define one quantity you always take the other quantities as one so if i have to define power and power i know is 1 upon f we take this f as 1 meter so that we can define this power by standard unit so if i am taking 5 6 7 as the focal length that may not be true for every focal every lens right any lens can have any focal length so 1 is a standard number so to define any term like the power or any other term we always take the other terms in that equation as 1 so apart from p what is the other term or other quantity in this equation it is f so we take f as 1 so what is the power of a lens it is defined as the focal length is 1 meter that is the power of the lens when the focal length is 1 meter the power of the length is 1 diopter so if the focal length is 1, one meter what is the power power is 1 upon f equal to 1 upon 1 equal to 1 diopter so what is 1 diopter 1 diopter is the power of the lens of focal length 1 centimeter sorry 1 meter that is how we define it okay we take other quantities to be 1 so that we can define it for 1 diopter or we can define it for one of any quantity that we want to define it for. Okay. And a combination of lenses. This is a simple topic. You know, when you go to the eye doctor, what does, does he do? If any one of you or your friends has been to an eye doctor, what does he do? He puts a kind of a spectacles in your eyes and then he puts different lenses and he tells you and he asks you, do you see clearly from this lens? Do you see clearly from this lens? What is he doing? He is basically putting lenses of different powers and seeing which one is working for you okay so here it is saying during an eye testing an optician puts different combinations of corrective lenses corrective lenses basically means the lens for correcting your eyes because when your eyes become weak you need the lens in the spectacles to see clearly okay so the combination of two lenses is simply done by the additive property that means if a two diopter lens and a 3 diopter lens are used in combination. The combination would just be 2 plus 3 equal to 5 diopter. That's it. Simply. Okay. So just the additive property is used. And this can be used to design any lens. So if you need a 5 diopter lens. The optician can easily combine a 2 diopter lens and a 3 diopter lens to give you a 5 diopter lens. Okay. Great. The first question here says define 1 diopter of Lens. So, we just said that diopter is nothing but 1 upon focal length or the reciprocal of focal length. And 1 diopter, if we want to find 1 diopter here, if we want to get 1 in this equation, I have to put F as 1 because if we put if we put D equal to 1 upon, say if I put F as 2, would I get 1 diopter? No, I'll get 0 0.5 diopter, right? That is 1 by 2 diopter. I want to find 1 diopter. So, what do I have to do? I have to put F as 1. So, how do I define 1 diopter? I say 1 diopter is the power of lens with focal length as 1 meter. Okay? Simply, that's how you define it. Next question says, a convex lens forms a real and inverted image of a needle at a distance of 50 cm from it. Where is the needle placed? Also find the power of the lens. So, the first thing that I am going to ask you to notice here is that it is given that the image is equal to the size of the object. So, do you remember what does this make you think about? What did we study in case of magnification? When the image and object size is equal. What is the magnification? It is 1. So in the solution, that's the first thing that we are going to be using. That it is given to us that the object and image size is equal. So magnification produces 1. And magnification we know is V by U. And I forgot to write the given here. You will always write the given thing. You will write that it's a convex lens. Then you will write that you are given that an inverted image of a needle is formed 50 cm. That means we know that in case of a convex lens, 
the image is formed on the right hand side right and if it's real and inverted that means an actual image is being formed so our v is plus because it's formed on the right hand side 50 centimeters right now okay did someone notice what mistake i made here i actually wrote m is equal to 1 but if you remember in case of a convex lens is the image real and inverted or virtual and erect it is always downward so our magnification is minus 1 don't make the mistake i made okay always think about the direction in which the image is formed in case of a convex lens it is always real and inverted okay so here if I put m is minus 1 and I know v is 50, so 50 upon u. So if I take u here and I take minus 1 here, so we get u is nothing but minus 50 centimeters. So we have found the object distance, right? We had to find the object distance. Where is the needle placed? That means u we had to find. So we have found that the object is placed 50 centimeters to the left of the optical center. Great. Now we have to find the power. For the power, what do we need to find? We need to find the focal length. So, we know 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon v minus 1 upon u equal to what is 1 upon v is 50 centimeter and our u is minus 50 centimeter. So, this minus and minus combine to become plus. So, it's 1 upon 50 plus 1 upon 50 is equal to 2 upon 50. This is our 1 upon f. So, our f is nothing but 50 upon 2 which is equal to 25 centimeters okay now we have found the focal length now we have to find the power so we had said that power is nothing but 1 upon f now do you remember the second important thing i told you was this f always has to be in meter so when we put 25 there we have to convert it to meter so power is 1 upon 25 when we convert it to meter it is into 10 to the power minus 2, right? Centimeter to meter, we do into 10 to power minus 2. So, what is 1 upon 25? 1 upon 25 is nothing but 0 0.04 upon 10 to power minus 2. Then, when we bring this minus 2 to the numerator, it becomes 0 0.04 into 10 to the power 2, which becomes 4 diopter. This is the power of the lens. Okay, next question it says find the power of a concave lens of focal length 2 meters. Super easy question. Power is nothing but 1 upon focal length. Here power is 1 upon, it is already in meters so we don't need to change it. 1 upon 2. So our power is nothing but 0 0.5 diopter. That is our power. Okay, so students in this part of the chapter we learned about the different numericals, the different types of sign conventions and where the image is formed in case of a convex and concave lens. So make sure you keep in mind the sign convention, you keep in mind what does the positive upward mean real and virtual, what does the positive and upward mean virtual and erect, negative or downward means inverted and real and all of the ray diagrams and keep in mind the ray diagrams when you are doing these numericals so that as and when you are getting the answers you can side by side cross check it with your ray diagrams and be sure that okay i have done the right thing okay so this was the chapter on light reflection and refraction do all your chapters and your concepts very thoroughly because this is a very interesting and a very important chapter too okay students i hope you enjoyed this lecture thank you and take care